Hello everyone, my name is Eddie Joe. I am an intensivist. The article I'm going to be taking apart today is titled Saline versus Plasma Light A in the Initial Resuscitation of Trauma Patients. It was published in February of 2014 and today is October 17, 2019. This is my interpretation of the article and I may be making some errors. I am not a statistical genius. I am a boots on the ground, bedside intensivist, not in academia, trying to do the best I can for my patients. I am human, I make mistakes. But if you learn anything from this video, please hit, hit the like button and or comment on my video. It, it helps the YouTube algorithm promote my page and therefore these articles and videos get to more people. Also, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. My handle is at EddieJoeMD and the links to this article and many others I share with YouTube and Instagram are on my website, eddiejoemd.com. It's all in the description box below. Now that that's all over with, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I'd like to give a lot of credit to the authors. These guys right here, they're all out of UC Davis, okay? And my Apple Pencil is not working properly. Anyway, so I'd like to start off this talk by saying that I am not a trauma surgeon. I am not a trauma physician. I do not take care of trauma patients in my current practice. I did several rotations in the trauma intensive care unit during my fellowship training, but by no means am I going to pretend to have the knowledge that my colleagues who do this every day have. The study that I'm going to be discussing today, this study right here, is a pilot study, and my Apple Pencil really isn't working with me. See, the problem was that the authors were concerned that um, the authors were concerned about the metabolic acidosis that occurs from elevated chloride concentrations in 0.9% sodium chloride. And the reason why is because this really doesn't want to work with me. 0.9% NaCl is 154 milliequivalents per liter of sodium and 154 milliequivalents per liter of chloride. Okay. And the issue is that the normal serum chloride is between 98 to 109, depending on your reference ranges on your lab. And the normal sodium levels are between 135 to 145. The fluid that they were comparing it to is plasmolite. And I have discussed plasmolite in great extent, to great extent, on my Instagram as well as on this page. So I could link some other videos to show you. But the sodium concentration in plasma light is 140 milliequivalents per liter, and the amount of chloride is 98 milliequivalents per liter. Let's not forget that plasma light also has 5 milliequivalents per liter of potassium. It also has magnesium in it, and it has two different buffers, one being sodium acetate and the other one being sodium gluconate. Okay. Now, the hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis, this one right here, is not something new about how it adversely affects our patients. It affects the kidneys. We've known it for decades now, for one reason or another. Now is when the data is starting to come out of how it causes acute kidney injury. I know what a lot of you will say with regards to resuscitation of trauma patients. What you need to do is give these people whole blood and fix whatever their trauma is. I understand that. But at the same time, uh, some of these patients still need some sort of IV fluids, and that's where these authors were going with this trial, okay, with this pilot study. The reason why the authors chose to go with saline solution as, a, excuse me, saline solution versus plasma light as opposed to saline solution versus Ringer's lactate is because the Ringer's lactate has calcium in it, and blood products are anticoagulated with citrate and when you give patients who need blood products you give them LR while you're infusing blood that blood that's going into the patients could coagulate and you could run into some problems now surgeons are trained from my experience to focus on base excess to know how well their patients are being resuscitated now, if you go ahead and you give a call to a surgeon at any point to give them a heads up that their patient is, going, is deteriorating and that they're sick, the first thing they're going to ask you is, what is the base deficit? And they expect you to have that answer. Plasma light is a balanced salt solution, as I mentioned to you before, which helps out with this base 
excess and I'm going to show you why soon. There were 46 patients enrolled in this study. They actually had a whole bunch of other patients but there were issues. And they did find that plasmolite corrected the base deficit faster than saline solution, 0.9% sodium chloride. Therefore, the primary outcome was achieved. Patients reached and remained in their normal acid-base physiology longer when they were given plasmolite versus saline. They also found that the saline solution goes ahead as we expected and leads to a hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis, so more acidosis. It also decreased the serum bicarb levels and it created a worse base deficit. The patients also had an increased urine output when they had plasmolite compared to saline solution. Now there's some data out there that's uh, a little hard to find and I wish there was more substantial data that there's a concern whether the sodium gluconate that's one of the theoretical buffers in plasmolite creates an artificial uh, increase in urine output but that's not specified in this paper. Some institutions worry about the cost of plasmolite, which is approximately $1 on top of the cost of your saline or ringer's lactate, depending on the institution and depending on their contract. This study showed that providing plasmolite kept serum magnesium levels closer to normal. Actually, none of the patients in the study needed magnesium replacement versus those patients in the saline arm required approximately four grams of magnesium for replacement. The authors in their institution showed that two grams of magnesium at their shop costs approximately $5.19. And this was back in 2014 when the study was published. That means that there could potentially be some cost savings in gave, giving people plasma light compared to saline just up front, just from saving uh, money from a magnesium replacement perspective, not taking into account potential adverse uh, effects from checking more ABGs because the patient's acidotic, checking more labs to see if their lactate is clearing, to see if uh, their serum bicarb is improving, working up potential acute kidney injury, all those things are things that we need to keep in the back of our mind. I wanted to just go through this study quickly to show you that plasma light was superior to 0.9% uh, NACL. And this was a study from 2014, guys. Today's 2019. If you all don't know this yet or aren't familiar with plasmolite and its beneficial effects, you know, time to start talking to people in your shop about it. Because like I said, it's not that much more expensive. It's just $1. If you think about all the unnecessary antibiotics and testing we do for people that cost more than $1, we could easily afford to pay for this in our patients. Okay, especially if we're going to have less uh, down the road effects from all this. All right, I think that's enough for today. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.